Welcome to the Single Era Diaries. Exploring the journey of a woman who hasn't experienced what it's like to be single in her entire adult life and pretty much most of her teenage life too. Each episode will navigate the journey of finding a sense of identity, exploring the challenges of co-parenting, finding love of self and healing all whilst tackling the complexities of the chequered landscape of dating and dating apps, meeting new people and operating solo in a world that celebrates couples, marriage and codependency. I am your host, founder of Nascent Media and newly single woman, Jade Graham, and this is the diary of my single era. For another episode of the Single Era Diaries, where this week I am going to be getting into grieving and the process of letting go of all that might have been. And I guess I'm exploring how grief shows up for us when relationships have ended, but also how they can continue to show up for us even when we're in the midst of a new chapter. And It's the final day of January as I'm recording this episode, January being a month that I think for very many of us truly feels like it has been going on forever and perhaps it's the greyness of January. January is always that very grey period where we've had the frivolity and the joy and the celebration of the holidays and we get into January and it's cold and it's wet and the lights are down and the decorations are down and all of that joyous activity has wrapped up and we find ourselves, or at least I find myself, overweight, tired, a little bit grumpy, it's grey, where's the blue sky, I need to have a holiday, all of those feelings and I think that's where a lot of us are at but I I actually realized amongst this kind of malaise that I'm in that in addition to the fact that it's January I am still navigating the stages of grief and the fallout from my previous relationship which it might come as a surprise. I mean, it comes as a surprise to myself in very many ways because I've got some really good things going on. There are lots of challenges going on at the same time, but there's certainly some really positive things. Specifically, the fact that I'm at the early stages of a new relationship, which is going really great, uh, a status that I definitely didn't believe I would reach perhaps ever but certainly not at this point and I didn't expect to be enjoying this new relationship or any new relationship quite so much I mean the dynamic is so incredibly joyful and different to that of previous relationships that you might expect that that joy kind of overarches any other more negative uh, feelings and emotions but the presence of this new relationship and the joy that it is bringing, it is paired with this sense of sadness and loss, not about this relationship in itself, but also more about the years that I I feel now that I lost to something that wasn't right for me and as as those feelings emerge it's this sense of loss of what I had hoped and planned and worked for my life to become and I think it's a feeling that's also aided by my being a mother and being a mother to my wonderful daughter who I continue to feel guilt about in the fact that she her family life is not this traditional family setup that I certainly knew and understood as a child and that is one that our society portrays as being the ideal setup, this one nuclear family of two parents and 
one or more children and a home and that being the 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 one home that everybody in the most part shares together and I do have this sense of guilt and grief and loss about the fact that that isn't the home that I have for my daughter whilst at the same time recognizing that two happy homes are so much better than one unhappy home but there is still that that feeling of gosh I am not I haven't got this right. I I made bad choices. I made bad decisions. And there is, of course, that the grieving feeling of, as with any relationship, particularly if it is a long standing one, which my previous relationship certainly was. You know, this is somebody who was for very many years my confidant, was my partner, was my soundboard, was my life traveler of. A good decade and a half and so my life now has evolved to the extent that I spend very infrequent time with that person but I spend a lot of time with the child who is the outcome of that partnership and her life now is split between he and I and yes we do co-parent and yes we do share time and do things together but certainly not to the extent that we would have done when we were one family unit and so I think that that grief that I feel it's not there all the time it isn't present all the time it is something that comes in fits and starts it comes in waves and I I'm wondering whether other people that are going through a post-separation period having just experience the holidays and Christmas and New Year's or any other sort of big festival or tradition that your family or that you celebrate if you've just come through that then I'm wondering you know are you also feeling that sort of prevalence of this sense of kind of sadness this this sort of grief of the acceptance that things are so very different now because that's where I'm really at I'm in this sort of this feeling of we've had this period of the month's festivities the whole doing Christmas as an officially separated family and couple because last Christmas my ex and I were in the stages of separating and working through how to do that what would that look like how could that work how would we separate our lives and manage that how would we extricate ourselves from each other's lives whilst also still being parents together so at this time it would Christmas of last year um, in fact it's two years ago now it would have been Christmas of 2022 there was lots of talking plenty of arguments discussions around plans sleeping separately and whilst publicly together to our families and friends we were very much apart in actuality and had been for a good couple of months several months probably in fact leading up to that and so reflecting now on this last day of January at the Christmas that's just gone like Christmas 2023 it's pretty much a year on from the commencement the official commencement of our unravelling and whilst Christmas was in so very many ways really lovely my ex and I we truly made the best of this co-parenting dynamic that we have my ex stayed over at my house on Christmas Eve so that he could be there in the morning to open gifts with our daughter and enjoy the whole day my best friend was thankfully and gratefully home from the state so she was here for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day which was I probably feel one of the greatest gifts of all this season because there was a lot of wine and a lot of laughter and it was an absolute tonic with everything that was going on and my daughter had a really great time she loved having my friend over she loved that her dad was here for Christmas and she and I spent a really lovely time having this kind of traditional family experience where of course my ex and I are friends as opposed to sort of romantic partners and my daughter really relished in that environment and that dynamic and she and I spent New Year's with my family and in addition to all of that lovely stuff I got to enjoy a series of some really lovely dates with my new boyfriend who 
is an absolute joy to be around and is an excellent and incredibly thoughtful gifter. I was very fortunate in the lovely thoughtful gifts that I received over Christmas. So there was lots of really lovely stuff happening and going on, which in many ways begs the question as to why, given all of these lovely unfolding times and occasions and relationships that are budding and developing why I am finding myself in this feeling of continuing grief and I figured as ever if this is something that I'm experiencing then I'm certain that others must be experiencing the same if you're in the early stages of your separation if you're signing divorce papers if you have separated and you're sort of you know six months a year in a couple of years in or even if it is something that's fairly well established and you just find yourself unable to fully move on I figured that like me you are perhaps finding the navigation of that grief the end of the relationship the end of the marriage or long-term partnership that there are feelings of grief that are continuing to come with that Grief is, of course, typically and primarily associated with the passing of a loved one, the the the, the loss of somebody that you care about from this life experience that we're having. But grief also extends, I firmly believe, to the emotions that you have around the life that you either had or you thought you were going to have and that grieving feeling, that grieving emotion is really a natural part of our overall human experience too and that certainly can extend to the grief of a relationship breakdown and it's it's easy to, when you consider what goes with a relationship, particularly one where you have built a life together that might be a home it might be shared friends it could be shared passions and interests it could be like myself and my ex we share a daughter together I established a business whereby my ex was invited to come and work within that business so we had lots of shared interests and shared space and shared time but relationship breakdown grief can include the loss of a current way of life or if you're post split it could be a previous way of life it can be mourning memories from the past and that's definitely a rabbit hole that I find myself slipping into looking at photographs of my daughter and my ex and I when we uh, were only a couple of years into being parents and sort of not only mourning those memories that have gone but also the reality the very real fact that I'm very unlikely to experience that again becoming a mother again and having those sort of early experiences of motherhood with a child that is a baby and very young that that is also something that you might also find yourself mourning if you're of a similar age to myself and it can also include the letting go of hopes dreams plans that you might have made ideas that you have for the future if you're anything like myself that loves creating vision boards and sort of mapping out what life is going to be it's it's also mourning and grieving the things that you had sought to have thought about having desired having were perhaps working towards and it's it's grieving the fact that those things aren't going to pan out in quite the way that you were expecting or anticipating and really a prominent facet of how this grief is manifesting for me personally is really grieving the family life that I was fortunate to enjoy in my childhood. I grew up in a home where, yes, of course, there were, as with most families, there were some challenges to overcome. There were some disagreements between my parents and indeed between my parents and I that needed to be overcome. But my parents and my family home was one where, despite their having split on a couple of occasions, they 
worked through it they came back together we had a family home where it was my father my mother my brother and I and that is the kind of home setup that I had of course envisioned for myself and for my daughter I did not go into the process of becoming a mother lightly it was something that I took incredibly seriously it was um, a series of events that I saw as being quite miraculous given my fertility status and I certainly didn't become a mother thinking that my family life was going to unravel to the extent that it would be irreparable and so there is also that feeling of grief about the fact that I can't provide my daughter with that nuclear traditional family that I had anticipated and perceived and believed was going to be our home life and along with that of course comes the grief of not believing certainly at this current this current stage that I find myself in that I'm going to be able to provide her with a sibling a a genetic sibling there certainly wouldn't be a sibling that would come from her father and I because of course we are uh, completely separated and separate and that's not something that's going to happen but equally it's highly unlikely that I will be providing a genetic sibling with uh, a new partner largely driven by my fertility issues, my age, my uh, perceived or the the perception that I have of the gap being too large between my daughter now and any forthcoming sibling. So there's a lot of grief around that as well. And when we think about grief, when we contemplate grief, one of the experts that I always reflect on in the work um, that has informed some of my professional career is that by uh, a psychiatrist who you might have heard of her name is Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and Kubler-Ross is cited as uh, being somebody that uh, did a lot of work and research around the stages of grief and how they apply to the grieving process. Uh, There's something that you might have seen or heard which is like the Kubler-Ross change curve because the stages of grief that Kubler-Ross described are very often applied to change in the professional and business world so when an organization is navigating a period of change those same stages of the way that we as humans metabolize and process those stages of grief are applied to those scenarios as well and so the stages of grief that Kubler-Ross described that we will go through as people include denial followed by anger then bargaining then depression and then acceptance and if you can imagine those different emotional states of being as being on a curve with the denial stage being sort of at the top of if you picture sort of a skateboard like kind of ramp like denials at the top and then it goes down to anger down to bargaining where you're kind of like slipping into this sort of emotional pit of despair where you're denying the reality of the situation and you're trying to almost identify a way that you can fix it or make it better like oh you know I'll, I'll do this in exchange for having that person back and then you move beyond that into this depressive state where the grief has really taken hold of you and there is this this sense of inability to do anything to resolve or fix the situation and then you slowly move up into this period of acceptance and the stages of grief be that in the loss of a loved one or the demise of a relationship or the loss of a job or the closure of a business or the loss of a home or something that is significant by way of a change in your life those stages of grief that we go through they're not linear And it's not a case that you move through denial into anger and bargaining and then you're on this sort of homeward straight towards depression and acceptance. There's lots of moving back and forth in between those stages and you can, as grief continues to process through us as people we can find that we're moving sort of back between sort of like denial we'll go to bargaining we'll go back to being angry again and then we'll move into a depressive state and then perhaps we'll go back to anger again and then maybe we'll go back to denial it's like it's really happening and then again trying to bargain to find solutions and then we might come into acceptance and then find ourselves back in in depression again and 
because those experiences and those stages aren't linear and I think most of us who have experienced what it feels like to move through the stages of grief for any of the reasons that I've mentioned will testify to the fact that it's not linear and that you do move back and forth between those stages for me presently as I acknowledge and address the grief that I'm experiencing at this time for the life that I thought I was going to have and the very different way in which that is unfolding now with a co-parenting situation with a new boyfriend and a new person that I feel very strongly towards and then of course my daughter and all of the different facets and trying to get my finances recalibrated and trying to manage a home on my own and all of these things that are all contributing to the feeling of 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 joy but also challenge for as happy as I feel in the freedom of not being in a relationship that was frankly not working well for very many years and the joy of having a new relationship the combination of those actually is a stark and daily reminder of just how much I was missing out on in my previous relationship that wasn't working. And I do still have moments and days where I really do grieve for the fact that in very many ways my relationship was letting me down. I wasn't forthright uh, and nor did I feel a sense of self worth and deservedness in having the kind of relationship and the kind of love that was one that could serve me it wasn't a loving partnership that was serving me and as a result of that I wasted a decade and a half in something that wasn't right for me wasn't loving romantic it wasn't balanced it wasn't equal and oftentimes it could fail to be emotionally supportive and I'm grieving I'm grieving that loss of time, that loss of youth, that loss of vitality, the things that I wish I could have done or would have done or would have seen or the mistakes that I made, the friendships that I let go of, the experiences that I didn't pursue because of lack of confidence. There's so many aspects of the past that I can't change but I'm still experiencing this sense of grief around them. And there's also the acknowledgement that that shared life that I had that I did make some really poor choices and bad decisions and that I probably romanticized far far more in my ever creative imagination as to what the possibilities and the idealized outcomes could be to an extent that was way beyond the capability of anything that in reality could actually have materialized and it's the recognition of that truth and the knowledge that I had invested an enormous amount of emotional and financial and physical energy to getting something to be more than it was perhaps ever possible to become and as a result of that now I find myself at the commencement of this new chapter that is beginning to open up and to develop and to unfold and I would say that on the back of the festive season in the last day of January where I'm still recalibrating many a thing that needs to be repaired that I'm swinging between depression and acceptance. I'm very much at the acceptance stage where that is forming the continuing foundation in terms of where I am at now and I do believe that that is perhaps in part down to the passing of time that it is you know 12 months on now where this unraveling has unraveled and it's established and the co-parenting partnership is working as well as it can with the additional factors that need to be worked through but I think that in conjunction with the recalibration of my mental health and my emotional state post that separation is enabling me to be very much at the acceptance stage with some facets of depression. And so you might be listening to all of this and thinking, okay, well, that's exactly where I'm at. You know, I'm I'm also feeling that or you know maybe you're at the anger stage maybe you're at the bargaining stage maybe you're still at the denial stage that all of this is really happening and all of those stages 
are the stages that you are going to work through. But if you are like myself asking, well, how can I actually deal with these feelings of grief then? Let's let's unpack how how it's possible to move through those feelings of grief and how to work to that to the extent where you will feel better. So the first thing is to take your time and that's definitely where I'm at. I'm taking the time that I need and and for you, you know, whatever stage of grief it is that you're at, even if you're at sort of the initial stages of your relationship unraveling, taking your time to process that grief, that your relationship isn't where you want it to be, that it's not transpired to be what you ideally had is absolutely key. It's a case of not beating yourself up. It's a case of accepting and dealing with the emotions that you're having and to hold some space for them. And in terms of doing that, not only taking your time, but not looking to avoid your feelings. Like you need to feel them. I will absolutely testify to the fact that during the summer of last year, I I don't think that I was fully feeling my feelings. I think I was very much distracting myself. And I think that is something that goes hand in hand with the fact that I didn't feel ready to really put myself out there. I didn't really feel ready to date, even though I was doing those things. I was going to the gym a lot. I was distracting myself with not being in my home, in my house, with working out, drinking a lot of wine, not sleeping well, lots of distraction on social media, doing my creative pursuits, but definitely not managing my business effectively. And as a result of that, I was distracting myself from the feelings that I was having. And I wonder whether that is a contributing factor now to the fact that that grief is still part of my experience because I didn't feel those feelings at the time that they were most prevalent and when they were perhaps at their peak and that could well be why they're still around now and what I will of course advocate for to anybody that's listening is like feel your feelings don't eat them don't drink them don't avoid them acknowledge and honor the fact that you're going to have feelings of sadness because there is an end to your hope there is an end to the dreams that you had there is an end to that emotional connection that you have with that person even in my own scenario my own situation yes I co-parent with my ex but I will never have that emotional connection that I had with him when we were in a relationship and I'll certainly never have the level of trust and faith in him that I had prior to finding that he was sleeping with a friend of his and lying about it so those levels of emotional connection and trust are never ever going to be as they were and so those feelings are ones that I have to lean into and if you're also having those challenging difficult emotions don't avoid them like make the space and make the time for you to feel them getting help as well from those around you I mean this can be everything from friends my dear friends who put up with my moving back and forth in how I'm feeling and are incredibly gracious and supportive of the times that I need to rant or cry or sob or be dismissive or glib or ridiculous. Uh, I think having that good support network is absolutely critical as with family members as well. I mean, having people around you that can be available and hands-on to listen to your feelings, to give you a hug, to encourage you, to tell you to not dwell on the past, which is something that I very often have from my friends and also my mum, who's always really keen to tell me like to just focus, like focus on what's to come, not on what has been. Um, That's also a really crucial part that community support is something that's also going to aid you with the feelings of grief that you're having equally so creating some new memories so I mean this could well be challenging for you if you're in a co-parenting situation like myself where you can't necessarily just go to completely new places you do need to have some of that overlap with the shared life that you had perhaps built with your ex-partner but that doesn't mean that you can't do new things and try new things it doesn't mean that you can't take a new route to work or get a a new role or a new job it doesn't mean that you can't try different you know coffee shops or new wine bar openings you can get a new hairstyle have a glow up 
buy different clothes, look a little bit different, get a nose piercing. Like there are lots of things that you can do that are going to cement some new memories that will become your core memories. And also, again, if you're like myself with a with a, a child that you share with your ex, you know, you're going to need to create some new memories with your child. And they might well be solo experiences where you're not with your former partner you're not doing this family experiences you're doing sort of solo parenting experiences with your child creating those new memories creating those new things that you can focus on and hold on to and enjoy so that you're looking back on those new memories as opposed to the ones where you were in your previous relationship and so I guess with all of this I mean the stages of healing that we go through and the emotional responses that we have as we continue to heal, they're all going to be impacted by the reasons behind the breakup or maybe not just the breakup, but things you find out afterwards. They're going to be impacted by the length of the relationship and the intensity of the relationship, how well established it was, how complex it was, the shared nature of what you had built together. There could be some attachment issues. I... 100% found it very very difficult to sort of extract the degree of emotional dependency that I had on my ex that I had built up over a decade and a half I think you know in so very many ways it's inevitable that when you're with somebody for a long time they do become your sounding board and they do become your confidant and to extract that way of operating and to develop past that takes a lot of work and a lot of kindness to yourself and it's something that I have to continually work on daily knowing that I can't go to my ex and neither do I necessarily want to I can't lean on him in that way and so you have to kind of find space for you to do that for yourself by leveraging the relationships that you do still have that are still trustworthy and supportive and loving towards you and knowing that there are all of these factors that are really going to influence the longevity of your grief and your capacity to move through that and really just being kind to yourself as you continue to do it is one of the key things that will aid that recovery and the continuation of that recovery and so does meeting new wonderful people and be that friends or be that you know new romantic partnerships be that exploring new things for yourself as time progresses and the grief continues to become perhaps more balanced in the final latter stages where yes it still hurts and yes the idea of where you're at and the notion of what you have lost can still rear its ugly head but at some point there will be a day where it feels like I've actually moved to a good place and that does come with time. So as ever, if any of the topics that I have spoken about in today's show are resonating for you, then it would be great to hear your thoughts. If there are stories that you feel you have that are connected to the sensation of, of grief that you're experiencing with the demise of your relationship, then my contact information are in the show notes and it would be really great to share Uh, our sort of collective experience and where we're at in terms of the progression of our single era as ever the show always benefits from being liked and shared so thank you very much for listening and do feel free to like or share with a friend that you think this episode could help i will link in the show notes a little more information on the kubler or stages of grief and some tools and tips on how to navigate those stages that you may want to review yourself or share with a loved one or friend so as ever thank you very much for listening to the single era diaries and i'll be back next week in between times if you are dating out there date safely if you're navigating the stages of grief be kind to yourself and uh peace out the single era diaries is produced and distributed by nascent media and executive produced by me jade graham Podcasts grow by being liked and shared. So if you enjoyed today's show, then please be sure to like and share with a friend who you think will enjoy the show too. Subscribe and if you have a moment to rate and review wherever it is that you listen to your podcast, that would be super appreciated too. Thank you for listening and peace out.